Hello and welcome back to Sunrider Liberation Day Return. The two of them received their food and sat down on a table. So, how exactly did you find out Claude was a time traveller? You mentioned something about a vision earlier, right? Yes. Recently I had a strange dream. No, perhaps more of a vision, as it was far too real. I saw another version of myself, as well as you, Captain. I speculate I may have fallen into another universe, far different from our own. Most likely an episode orchestrated by our Doctor for purposes I do not fully understand. The experience was quite illuminating on a number of different matters. Sounds like it. Does explain quite a number of things about Claude. Yes, precisely so. Solar, is something the matter? Your face is kind of red. Uh, the stew is exceptionally hot, no? It makes perspiration fall over my face and down my back. Uh, Sola, you saw something in the vision, didn't you? Uh, wh what I saw was of no consequence whatsoever to the security of the ship. Certainly not a matter we need to ruminate on. It's bothering you, obviously. In fact, come to think of it, you've been acting strange around me in my timeline too. Although the Solar has no idea she's been acting unusually friendly ever since my rescue, and in the desert. Anyways, you know, you're free to say the things you want now. We don't live in a military dictatorship any longer. In fact, every Saren is proud of the freedoms we won from the new Empire. Our civil liberties were won only through the blood of martyrs, and those liberties won't exist unless we choose to exercise them. Understood. I am afraid this matter is far baser than such lofty ideals, however. Solar took a large bite out of her cod. The truth... The truth of the matter is... Is... Alas, I... I nearly committed... I am sorry. And with that, Sola beat a hasty escape, leaving a half-eaten soup on the table. Hey, Sola! Sola marched out of the mess hall and disappeared down the hallway. Unbelievable! Why can't she just be more honest about her feelings? Shield stood and followed after her. Ah, better go after her. Okay, that is gorgeous. <clears throat> Sorry, distracted by the backgrounds. After narrowing down the most likely places where Sola would go to collect herself, Shields ended up taking the lift to the Sunrider's observation deck. This was the highest point of the ship, surrounded by near glass windows, and from here lookouts and optical equipment could navigate the stars, detect ships even if the ship lost power, and of course the whole deck was sealed during battle so it wouldn't pose a threat to hull integrity. Stars surrounded Shields as he looked around for Sola, and on the opposite end of the observation deck was Sarah, a glistening blue orb. He spotted Sola staring off into space, and as expected she found tranquility here, surrounded by the enormous blackness of space. <clears throat> ah, you have followed me. I have. After all, you wanted me to chase after you, right? Ah, sorry, quick swig, throat getting dry. I am sorry. It appears I have become a difficult woman. While I have always sought to be a cool-headed and reasonable individual my whole life, I, I am afraid this is one matter which makes my heart waver and my mind run in circles. My heart ached so much I could no longer face you, yet my feelings are a betrayal of my queen and, and ultimately moot as this timeline will be erased from existence upon our mission's end. I... I'm merely wasting our time, endangering this mission, but by even pondering these possibilities, these these thoughts will merely make my aim falter, my, will cloud my awakenings. I must strive to be as pure as the... Shields lunged for Sol and wrapped his arms around her. Ah! He pushed Shola's chin up. She closed her eyes and slightly parted her lips. And he leant in, their lips met. It's not like you to talk so much. And I don't see the problem anyways. Saga properly confessed her feelings to my other self, received a rejection. And in this timeline, her feelings received a clear answer before they twisted into hate. Besides, isn't her romance with the other Kato shields anyway? Moreover, Claude told us this universe will be recreated once our mission's over. Doesn't necessarily mean everything will be lost. We could just as likely re-emerge in the next universe together with our feelings intact. I... I'm sorry. I'm merely complicating your situation. I thrust my emotions upon you when you have so recently been wounded by the one you loved. I, 
I am truly a weak woman. Such a being is undeserving of standing at your side. No. I've got a second chance to make everything right. I'm going to save Chigaro this time too. She may be a spy. She, she may have been sent to play with my feelings, but I know she was never aware of her directives herself. Chigaro's innocent as well. Everything was the prototypes doing. So I'm not going to be on the floor, rolling in despair. Not when I have a chance to make things right again. You don't have to worry about me, Sola. I'm fine. Actually, I'm doing better than fine. Right now I feel like I'm standing on top of the world. Because I have a pretty girl like you by my side. Ah, speaking such shameless words, you, you truly know how to embarrass me. <laughs> well, your captain never was one for subtlety. Indeed, it is so. Then, if the matter is settled... Sola stood on her tippy toes and closed her eyes once again. Shields wrapped his arm around her back and pressed their lips together once more. The two kissed, silhouetted by the faint blue light of a million stars. Ah. Sola's body untensed, her pent-up emotions finally released. The two of them stared at the stars. While Shields had momentarily caught a respite thanks to his actions, he had no idea that his biggest crisis was still yet to come. Shortly after spending time with Sola, he received a summons to the bridge. He arrived to see the tense faces of the command crew. What happened? Chigaro's escaped. We don't know how, but she managed to open her cell. Security? Eight marines, all in serious condition when a nearby conduit blew. Obviously not a coincidence. I've already got security turning the ship inside out to find her, but if she somehow managed to manipulate all our cameras too, it was a good half hour until we realized all the footage was fake. We're up against a prototype here. Her brain's been artificially augmented to perform feats way beyond our imagination. Her objective's got to be escape. We need to disassemble the Liberty. Now. We've already placed it in lockdown. Won't be enough. Start by removing the fusion reactor and then take off all the limbs. Damn. Could have used it during the battle. I think we'll have to take apart our own rider. Without a pilot, there's no point keeping it. We need to avoid the worst case scenario of having it used against us. Do what he says, Commander. You have authorization to remove the Liberty's reactor and do it immediately. Sir! Just disassembling the Liberty won't be enough, though. She could still escape on a shuttle, or a life pod, or any of our other riders. Still plenty of holes in the plan, huh? Everyone's anxiety peaked when the ship's alarm went off. What now? Contact! Red alert! Cease all resupply operations, man battle stations! A packed Loyalist fleet heading our way, approximately 300 strong. How did they get past the Alliance's defensive line? We're getting reports of a single packed rider decimating their forces. The combined fleet's been split too, allowing a packed strike force to pass through and approach the rear lines. A single pa That can only be one thing. Shield still vividly remembered the grotesque power of the Nightmare Ascendant. In the previous timeline, they'd only just barely defeated it, thanks to the power of the combined fleet and Fontana's forces, but this time the conditions of the battle were completely different. Instead of fighting in the front lines with the full support of the Alliance, they now faced the Nightmare Ascendant in an ambush where the Fontana's fleet was still not operational. It's the Nightmare Ascendant. It's an ancient Rubian rider now controlled by the leader of the prototypes. On top of an overwhelming firepower and defenses, the prototype leader can somehow awaken, just like a saga and Sola, which makes it nigh invincible. And you say you defeated it in your timeline? Yeah, but only with the help of the combined fleet and Fontana's allied forces. Sounds like you were playing on easy mode when you went through this. The other shields turned towards the tactical map. We should have seen this ambush coming. With their spy on board, the Sunrider exposed, and Fontana onto their sabotage efforts. The prototype's best bet is to kill us all before Fontana's ships enter to play. That means you've already thought of a plan, right? Unfortunately, our counter tactics are limited. The Sunrider still hasn't completed its resupply, while the Liberty is out of commission. We've known the ambush was going to occur, our only option was to meet it head on. The combined fleet is still tangling with a sizable remainder of packed ships. The Alliance will not be able to spare many ships to come to our aid. If we fall here, the packed strike fleet will completely route the resupply line, meaning the combined fleet will then face an attack from the rear with no fallback position. Put Fontana on the line. Sir. Looks like Alice has made her move. We're still an hour from removing the virus on our ships. You'll have to hold out until then. We don't have an hour, Fontana. I couldn't care less if you leave half your ships behind. Get your forces in order and assist us with whatever you can muster. Very well. The sabotage is most extensive on our assault carriers. If we prioritize repairing the fast cruisers only, we should be able to be by your side within 15 minutes. Alright, no choice. After Shields cut the channel with Fontana, Saga's voice crackled through the comm. This is the Rider Squad, standing by! 
Good. Begin sortie immediately. And the map filling up with red all around us. Watch for new packed riders. Target designation Ascendant. It's lost technology and its pilot can awaken just like you. Understood. What the? Suddenly, the roaring of a rider's thrust has peaked at the comms output. The blackjack's taken off without me! Shit! Close the hangar gate. Negative. If we use the override now, we won't be able to launch any of our other riders either. Shields tore himself from the tactical map and ran towards the hangar. Where are you going? No point having two Kato shields on the bridge. I'm leaving the battle to you. You're still the captain of this ship. I'm going to stop Chigara. All right. Good luck. Partner. Yeah. Good luck. With that, Shields entered the lift and went down to deck two. Shields entered the hangar to see the cr deck crew desperately trying to keep the blackjack from launching. They'd somehow managed to attach a ceiling-mounted electromagnetic clamp onto one shoulder for uh, particle guns with a spare rifle jammed at the, the launch rail. Shit! No, get back! The blackjack leaned down and fired its engine, sending the crew scattering in every direction. The hangar groaned as the ceiling superstructure holding the clamp slowly bent against the blackjack. Saga arrived on a buggy. Captain, we've got a situation! Yeah, no kidding, come on, we've got to figure out a way to keep Chigara from escaping with your ride. The ship's flat guns echoed through the hangar and the ship took a missile impact, sending shields to the floor. Shit! And if that wasn't enough, looks like the battle's begun. Steel groaned overhead and shields looked up in time to see the steel supports holding the clamp finally give out. Watch out! He dived on top of a saga as steel and concrete ran down around them. Concrete? You build your ships out of goddamn concrete? Are you mad? Anyway, luckily the debris fell a short distance away, covering both of them in dust, but not causing any injuries. Finally loose, the blackjack hit its thrusters and flew across the hangar. It's gonna get away! At the last second, the paladin stepped out of its maintenance bay and blocked the exit. HALT! Blackjack stopped and drew its assault rifle. No! He grabbed Osaga by the elbow and sprinted for cover. The blackjack unleashed a torrent of bullets inside the hangar, sending shrapnel ricocheting throughout the hangar. An unlucky crewman took a brick-sized fragment to his shoulder, cleaving a foot-long opening down his chest. Instantly killed, his body sprayed blood as it fell to the ground. Shield suppressed his nausea as shrapnel bounced all around him. FOOL! The paladin, unaffected by the small caliber rifle thanks to its armor, shot forward and collided with the blackjack. The two steel beer moths struggled against each other like two enormous sumo warriors. The blackjack opened its missile pods. Ah! If it fires off missiles in here, the whole ship's gonna blow! Just then, the phoenix shot forth, katana drawn. Hey The blackjack shot its reverse thrusters, narrowly avoiding getting cleaved in half, and it spun its pulse gun into sword mode and activated its laser beam. Ha! Never thought I'd be fighting the blackjack in the ship's hangar! Blackjack hit its wing thrusters, boosting forward. The phoenix nimbly moved out of the way, sending the blackjack crashing into a maintenance bay. She just braced its head against the cacophony of collapsing steel. The blackjack turned round and swiped its laser beam. The phoenix once again proved too fast, spinning out of the way. This place is too damn small, I can't use my assault guns either. The phoenix shot upwards, skimming against the ceiling, and came down in a powerful helm crusher. The blackjack deflected the phoenix's katana with its black iron blade, and the phoenix ducked the, phoenix, the blackjack's beam sword and, lashed, and slashed laterally, cutting through another maintenance bay. Too slow! Its beam sword still moving on its own momentum, and its black iron sword too heavy to raise in time. The phoenix shot forward and deftly dug its sword into the blackjack's shoulder. Can't get enough momentum going on here! Not to mention gravity's killing my speed! Shields grabbed a handheld microphone. Ikari! The missile pods! Crap! Just as Ikari realised the blackjack could destroy the entire ship every moment, the blackjack tumbled to the floor. Shields saw the Bianca approaching it, its grab gun active. I've got this! Claude, pull the reactor out! Understood! Just then Shields realised he had made a huge mistake. Wait a minute, and trust Claude with pulling out a highly explosive fusion reactor with a grav gun. But before Shields could react to his order, sparks flew from the back of the blackjack as its reactor was torn out. He squeezed his eyes shut and pressed himself flat on the floor expecting the worst. But miraculously, when he slowly opened his eyes, the reactor was safely on the floor and everyone was still alive. The flight crew flooded the hangar to contain the situation, and with a breath of relief he ran towards the now deactivated blackjack as well. Alright everyone, don't open the cockpit until ship security arrives. Put the reactor into cold sleep. Sir! Uh, is the blackjack alright? Looks like the arm's going to have to be replaced with a spare, and it's going to need a new reactor, but it's nothing we can't handle. Everyone else, you need it outside. Sorty, protect the ship. Copy. While most of the hangar, with most of the hangar destroyed, the remaining riders had no choice but to slowly file out the gate instead of using the linear rail.
Meanwhile, the other Kato Shields was caught in the middle of another life or death struggle. Three packed battleships approaching. Torpedo lock detected. Shields looked to the tactical map. The bulk of the combined fleet was still tied up with the main pack fleet. Roughly a hundred Alliance cruisers and two, two dozen battleships were stationed at the resupply line, but more than half of them were already damaged prior to the day and locked down for repairs or were in the middle of resupply operations, when he was both hopelessly outnumbered and outgunned. Fire ventral thrusters! The Sunrider shook as it descended, coming alongside a trio of Alliance cruisers. They won't be firing their main guns, but their flak guns should still be operational. Torpedoes incoming! Three from above! The Sunrider's flak guns burst around the ship, lighting the black void of space with a million explosions. Come on, come on! He exhaled when the flak guns on the cruisers activated, adding to the Sunrider's wall of fire. The nose of the forward torpedo fragmented as soon as it entered the flak shield, and spun wildly before getting pulled apart by the G-forces. One down! The second torpedo stubbornly continued through the vortex of explosions, sprayed with shrapnel but still not losing structural integrity. Sweat poured down Shield's forehead. All he could do was pray. Finally, the torpedo gave way to the relentless assault of shrapnel, splintering into a million shreds, but Shield's luck had run out. The final torpedo survived the flak and headed on a direct course for the Sunrider's Tower. All hands, brace for impact! Shields gripped the table as the bridge shook. Hit on deck one, fires reported section 15, loss of pressure at section 15. No damage to core systems. The packed battleships were still too far away for the Sunriders to engage. Their missiles would be shot down by flak while their lasers were useless against the enemy's shields. Where are our riders? The linear rail is inoperative. They're still attempting sortie. Just then, the Phoenix shot from the mouth of the ship. Sorry for being late. Had to walk out. The rest of the riders flew out one by one. What about the Blackjack? Temporarily out of commission. Crews trying to put it back together as quick as they can. Outnumbered and now lacking both the Liberty and the Blackjack. Shields wrecked his head for a strategy. Power surge detected from enemy battleships. Crimson beams of light shot from the battleships, burning trails of fire across the hull of the Sunrider. Shields hung on as the bridge swayed, and he heard the groaning of steel as the ship's structural latticework melted away. That the Liberty Shields were toast! More lasers cut through the ship, a console burst, flinging crewmen to the ground with facial burns. Is this... is this the end? Just then, the space around the battleships distorted. A battle group of 50 packed fa fast cruisers emerged from the war. The daggers dropped down above the battleships and loosed kinetic round after kinetic round as they dived towards the enemy's huge profile. The battleships attempted to return fire, but from the front the fast cruisers were hardly larger than corvettes. The battleships round shot past as fire rained down from above. Shields sighed in relief as the battleships fragmented from relentless hailstorm of steel. My apologies for keeping you waiting, Shields. Never thought I'd actually be glad to see your face, Fontana. Now is not the time to jest. The situation is still dire. Without a moment's break, Ava turned to Shields. Captain! Incoming enemy! It's the... The Nightmare Ascendant appeared before the Sunrider, its wings proudly outstretched. So, you're the enemy leader I've heard so much about. Shields! I have no idea how you managed to intercept our spy, or discover the sabotage done to Fontana's ships. But all of that will be meaningless if you and the Alliance fleet are destroyed. All units, destroy the Sunrider! Attack! A swarm of prototype units launched from pack carriers. Contacts! Aha! Ah, dear. The Ascendant's wing flyers detached and darted towards the Sunrider. We'll hold the line here! The Phoenix opened fire and sprayed the flyers with assault rounds, but they nimbly flew from the Phoenix's firing arc. Fast little buggers! Two flyers circled around and shot forth spears of light, and the Phoenix fired two of its wing thrusters, narrowly dodging the beams in a high-G corkscrew. Providence awaits. Solar's right eye ignited as she awakened, and the movement of the drone suddenly slowed to Solar's senses, as if they were swimming underwater. Focusing on our target, she lined up with the shot and fed the Seraphim's rifle with power. A flash of light later, and Solar's shot tore a hole in the drone's midsection before it erupted into a fireball. Thanks! The other drone spun round and came at the Phoenix for another pass. This time Akari was prepared. She stepped her foot on the pedals, feeding maximum energy to the engines, and the Phoenix shot forward on an intercept vector for the drone. hi -ya! With near inhuman finesse, the Phoenix shot past the drone, Katana drawn and sliced it from end to end. The rear of Akari's cockpit illuminated as the drone exploded behind her. Two down! Before Akari could celebrate, a dark shadow stretched across her rider. Oh shit! She spun out of the way seconds before the Ascendant descended upon the Phoenix and cleaved it apart with its great sword. That's one hell of a huge sword! <laughs> the Ascendant swaggered towards the Phoenix, sword raised above its head. 
The carrot barely managed to block the Ascendant's blade in time. Despite its titanic size, the Ascendant moved as quick as a viper. Ah! That thing has three reactor cores. No matter how you look at it, I'm outmatched here. The Ascendant merely shoved the Phoenix out of the way. With another almighty downward strike, the Phoenix's katana shattered into a million pieces. Shit! Hikari fired up her wing thrusters in a panic, but a moment of carelessness allowed the drone to line up a shot. The beam tore through one of the Phoenix's wing thrusters, sending it spiralling out of control. Ah! Providing assistance. Solar rained down shots. Alice's eyes ignited blue as she awakened and deflected the bullets with two swings of her greatsword. Im impossible. The tip of the Ascendant's particle gun glowed red as it let forth a scarlet lance, cutting into one of the Seraphim's legs and slicing apart its scanner dish. Ugh. Sola, are you alright? Yes, but the Seraphim is no longer fit to fight. Returning to base. Phoenix is out too, Captain. Without a sword, I can't do anything out here. I'll hold it back while you two escape. Don't do anything crazy while I'm gone, soldier boy. Of course. The paladin banged its rifle against its shield and moved to cover the two riders' escape. Its rear cannons rotated forward and shot high-density black iron towards the Ascendant. Useless! The Ascendant fired one of its knee thrusters, corkscrewing towards the Paladin. Ugh! All of the Paladin's missile pods opened, sending streams of smoke spiralling outwards. The Ascendant nimbly dodged through the missiles. The missiles which did impact put an area scratch on the ancient rider's frame. Ah! At that moment, Bianca used its gravity gun to immobilise the Ascendant. Now! Thanks! Paladin unloaded all of its munitions into the Ascendant at point-blank range. Smoke and fire enveloped the Ascendant as it received volley after volley of cannon fire, a swarm of missiles, even a stream of assault rounds for good measure. It would seem too good to be true if the Ascendant went down so easily. Kriska's blood went cold when she sensed movement behind her. <laughs> Alex licked her lip as the Ascendant stuck from behind the Paladin's blind spot. Somehow it had managed to escape the Bianca's gravity well and circle around behind the Paladin. Ah! The Paladin barely deflected the Ascendant's sword with its ablative shield. The Paladin's entire arm bent from the strike, sending sparks flying from its joints. Say goodnight! Just as the Ascendant was about to deliver the coup de grace, a crossguard of laser and steel blocked its sword from reaching the Paladin. Ha! <sighs> the so-called Shower of Ruvia. Sorry for being late, had to fit the Liberty's reactor into the blackjack before it could move again. A saga hit the reverse thrusters moments before the Ascendant overpowered its defences, and the Blackjack whirled out of its way as the Ascendant fired its particle gun. Its remaining drones spiralled towards the Blackjack like hounds on the prey. In a flurry of pulse bolts, the saga took two more of the drones out before ducking and weaving through a cobweb of lasers. Spinning in a wild dance, it shot a stream of particles from its shoulder guns, cutting through a third drone. The tip of the particle guns began to char black and rapidly overheat. Crap! The Liberty's reactor's feeding way more power than usual. I must have modified it to generate a lot more energy to power our ECM suite. All of the Blackjack's movements felt jerky, like a wild bull. One false move would cause the Blackjack to spiral out of control, or worse, cause a thrust of it to burst. But for some reason, Asaga's face broke into a grin. It's power! I like it! She slammed down her foot pedals, sending the Blackjack forward with explosive speed, and Asaga clenched her teeth as she was plastered against her seat. Hiya! She shot towards the Nightmare Ascendant, her blade drawn. Ha <laughs> Fool! The Ascendant raised its sword high and shot forward as well. Shields put his hand together in prayer as he saw the two streaks of light close onto each other on the bridge. A saga. Please come back alive. I'll show you what a true Shah can do! Ha! <laughs> Your toy is nothing against the might of the Ascendant. Ha! Ah! Ah! The two warriors' eyes burned with azure fire as they accelerated towards destiny. In an infinite instant, the two riders crossed each other, their swords moving quicker than the universe could accept. The space camp continuum rippled as the swords tore through the universe's laws. The blackjack's joint gave out, causing explosions throughout the rider. Sparks of electricity ran through its frame. The saga's cockpit burst, impaling her with shrapnel. Blood dripped down her face and she looked down in disbelief to see a thin steel rod sticking out from her belly. Suddenly the pain struck her all at once and she collapsed in agony, her eyes losing focus. No way! I, I lost? That quickly? The Ascendant approached the Blackjack and grabbed it by its head, completely untouched. Ha ha! Now do you understand, Princess? You will never become as powerful as I! For the truth of our power is that it feeds upon dark emotions, twists and corrupts our minds, 
brings about the absolute evil lurking in the depths of our hearts. Without hatred, you will never wield the power of the Shahs. Without tasting the true horror of the blackest defeat, you will have no place in war. Only when you are destroyed in mind and body, stripped naked, stomped until every ember of hope has been extinguished, can you truly hold the power of the Shahs. Foolish girl, you sought to kill me? I have already died years ago. This woman is but an empty husk, kept alive by this monstrous machine called the Ascendant. You're wrong. Asaga looked up, blood dripping down her mouth, the fire in her eyes extinguished. I... I learned something the past few days. Power brings arrogance. It makes you start thinking that you deserve to have stuff that doesn't belong to you. Twists up your insides whenever you get jealous. But you know, true power isn't about getting things. You can have all the love, wealth and influence in the galaxy and still be weak. Because power ain't about the stuff you have. It's about the stuff that can give you that, what, that makes you powerful. Alice's eyes changed. She looked coldly upon a saga, like a disappointed matron about to punish her younger daughter. Foolish girl. If you take this path, then all that awaits you will be a long, miserable death, as I found all those millennia ago. The throne of Ruvia will bring certain doom to the unprepared. Abandon all pretenses of hope and destroy your enemies before they destroy you. Wait. You're not. And at that moment, Alice snapped back to attention. Not again! I'd better end this quickly before. I think it's time we said goodbye, Shah of Ruvia. No! I'm afraid it's your loss. What? Have you lost your mind? No, because I managed to buy the captain enough time. Captain, the combined fleet has broken through the pack fleet. They're coming to assist. About time! You have my apologies for our late arrival, Captain. But thanks to the reinforcements not arriving, the enemy is running low on munitions. It will not be long before the tide turns in our favour. Ha! <laughs> and I have further good news. A fresh pla a fresh well, a fleet of I'm gonna have a drink and then read this line, because for some reason I'm I'm stumbling over it. <sighs> a fleet of fresh packed assault carriers has appeared from behind Sarah's moon. Thanks to your early warning, my engineers have now fully restored control over our ships. My fleet is back on the field. Yes! Shields pumped the air, unable to contain his joy. His future shelf's gambit had worked. Even without Chigara's help, they had managed to restore Fontana's fleet. Now I understand a certain rider has been giving you trouble. I'm afraid so, Admiral. Not only that, but his pilots are spitting him into my ex-girlfriend. Kind of gives me the creeps. Oh? Well, please do hold back any unsightly tears as we enter. All ships! Open fire! All ahead full, all ships, open fire on the Nightmare Ascendant as soon as you're in range. Ah! The Ascendant hit its thrusters, but the renewed stream of firepower was too thick to dodge. Oh, careful, Asaga! Ivanka used the moment to shoot out tow cables at the Blackjack and fall back towards the Sunrider. Thanks, Doc. No worries. Captain, our line of fire is now clear. On your word. No matter how many times, this never gets old. Fire the Vanguard Cannon. It's still weird having that with Japanese voices. Especially as when that guy yells fire, he sounds like a chicken croaking. Or is that just my impression of it? Ah! <laughs> <sighs> The Nightmare Ascendant was completely enveloped in fire as ships struck it from every direction. With the unexpected entry of Fontana's fleet, the tide of battle had reversed. Everywhere around Alice, her ships lit on fire and broke apart against the onslaught of Fontana's assault carriers and advanced riders. At this rate, they would be completely annihilated. This... this wasn't how I planned this! How? How was I foiled? How did that fool shield see through my sister's spy? He was completely under our control! Wait... his... his actions are not consistent, could... C could he have had assistance from some outside meddler? The Wanderer! So, you have betrayed us! But that means I may yet win! With the remaining energy in the Ascendant, Alice spun her rider around. Captain! It's the Ascendant! What the? The flaming hulk of the Ascendant emerged from the Vanguard's beam and shot towards the Sun Rider. It's on a collision course for the ship! Fire! I'm going to have to leave this part here because we're running out of time, but I will say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next.